Hello again, my fellow book nerds. Emmy Walker here to do my 2016 book haul, plus or minus a few months. Uh, I haven't done a book haul since I think October of 2015, so I'm bringing you all the books that I've purchased since that point. Because that's been quite a haul, I, I haven't actually counted the books here. Hold on one second. Uh, 30 books. I actually thought there were more, but I guess not. Uh, it's possible that I have left some out, so yeah, I may have already put them away and then forgot to actually put them in my pile here, but there are 30 here that I'm going to mention, and because there are 30 books, uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail with any of them. Some I might just give you the title and the best of my description of them, because some of them I can't even remember because it's been a couple months since I purchased them, and yeah. So let's get started! The first books I'm going to show you, I am having gonna have a hard time lifting them up because they are really heavy, but they are oof, the Avatar Last Airbender graphic novel sets. Um, the first one is called The Search, the second one is The Promise, and the third one is The Rift. Oof, my god, they are so heavy. Uh, I think there are three graphic novels within the set here, so yeah, like I said, I showed you that one here. This one involves, um, if you're familiar with the Avatar Last Airbender series, it kind of ends with a sort of cliffhanger with, um, with Prince Zuko, and I think in this one here, they go in search of Prince Zuko's mom, and I'm really excited to learn about that story. Uh, I'm even more excited that they got together with the actual writers uh, of the cartoon, because I, I feel like it'll be more authentic that way, and if it had been just somebody else, you know, picking it up, picking up the story, I like being it from the direct, like, the original brains. I feel like this is the way it should go, you know? <laughs> that makes sense. Um, yeah, so there's a second one. I don't know what this one is about. I actually didn't look too much into it. I just knew that they existed after I saw the search, and I was so excited I had to get them all. And, uh, and then we continue on with the rift, and just basing on this picture, I'm gonna guess that Toph and Aang have a bit of a falling out, or at least a disagreement. Um, and then... There is the beginnings of the next book. I don't. I think the third one. This is called um, Smoke and Shadow. I have part one and part two, and part three. I think comes out sometime this year. Uh, but yeah, so those I'm very excited about reading. And I actually am not a big graphic novel person because I can never really find any that just interests me so much. But this one I can't wait because I recently rewatched all of the last air uh, av last Avatar series and I got all the Legend of Korra because I'd never finished the Legend of Korra. Um, I didn't even know there was a fourth season, but I had to go out and get all the DVDs because I'm a freak, so yes, yeah, so that was exciting. And then of course I had to, you know, get the books and I found out also that they're going to be continuing the Legend of Korra in graphic novel form too, so that'll be fun to get into when they eventually print them. Alright, so now that I got my m most exciting one out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the rest of these, you know, loser books. Just kidding. Now, they're all great books, but those ones I was, I was most excited to show you. So, the first two books I picked up, which I don't know why I never owned, maybe I, I think I owned them at some point and lost them, I don't know, but I got these nice new versions of them. And that is uh, Quidditch Through the Ages, and then Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, and these are the, um, I don't know, they were the books within the Harry Potter world that they talk about, and, you know, this one's written by... Oh, I didn't know who this was. Kennelworthy Wisp. I never actually looked at the author of, of the Fantastic Be or um, Put It to the Ages. And this one's Newt's Commander. Um, they're making a movie, I believe, based off of this one here. So, yeah, very exciting to get back into that world. And they're just little, you know, not even novellas. I wouldn't even call them. They're like manuals almost. <laughs> The next two books I picked up, I mentioned the first in a previous video, um, and that is the, I think it's called the Study Series. This one's Poison Study by Maria V. Snyder, and then this one is Magic Study. I hate that the covers don't match, but what are you going to do? I think I read somewhere on, one, on her website that between different editors or publishers or whatever, that sometimes the uh, covers don't exactly match. What are you going to do? The content is all the same, that's all that really, really matters, is what's inside the books. But yeah, so I mentioned reading Poison Study in a previous video, and uh, it was really enjoyable, so I picked up the next one. Next we have two more books to add to my Tamara Pierce collection, and that is um, The Melting Stones, and then The Will of the Empress, and I believe these are two completely unrelated books, um, but they just were together on the shelf, and I picked them up, and gotta love half price books. Then we have another book in the Giver series, this is Messenger by Lois Lowry. Um, I finished the first book and then the second book, which I cannot remember the title, but it's the companion book to the Giver. Um, and then I you know, get into this one here because I am enjoying the series. I'm not much of a dystopian world book, um, especially with the influx of it lately. It's been kind of, um, you know, punching everybody in the face with a dystopian, but, uh, you yeah. know. 
I like this one. This one's not too, you know. Ah! Then I believe I purchased this after I made any other videos. Um, but that was The Girl Who Fell Beneath Fairyland and Led the Revels There. And this is by Catherine M. Valente? Valente, sorry, excuse me. Um, and this is, I believe, the third, no, second, second book in the series of the books that I can never pronounce the first book of, so I'm not even gonna try at this point. But yeah, so there's that. Then we have book three in the Grisha trilogy, and that is Rune and Rising by Lee Bardugo. And I didn't really enjoy the first book immensely. I, I enjoyed it enough to purchase the next two books. Well, I'd already purchased the second book, but I enjoyed it enough to continue this one here, even though I haven't even started Siege and Storm. But I have a feeling I'll at least enjoy it enough that I want to continue. I want to know what happens. I want to wrap it up nicely. This next one here is another one I can't even remember what it's about. I don't even know if I even read the blurb, but it kept calling to me. Every time I'd go into the store, I kept seeing it there, and I just finally couldn't pass it up. And that is Woven by Michael Jensen and David Powers King. And I'm assuming it has something to do with this ring that's on the cover. There we go. Yeah, that's what it's about. Then we have the final book in the Monstromologist series. That is The Final Descent by Rick Yancey. I still haven't picked up the, or read, I'm sorry, the second and third book in the series, but I so, rem I just, I so enjoyed the first book. The writing was just so well done that I, I don't find my, that I will dislike this book or the rest of the series, so I just figured I mean, it's, you know, six bucks and half price, at half price books, and I couldn't say no. Uh, this next one here is the 10th book in the Merlin trilogy, or Merlin series, excuse me, and this one's called Shadows on the Stars. It's by T.A. Barron. I started the series last year, and I've, I think I'm only on book two. Uh, but yeah, so this one here is the 10th book. I didn't own it. I have almost all of them at this point. But I'd like them all in this format. I don't, I think I even have this book already, but just not in this format. I'd like to have them all together in this trade paperback form. Then we have The Magician's Lie by Greer McAllister. And this one was an, when I saw, I was walking through Target and I saw it and it just called out to me, you know, I love, you know, love magic. And um, normally I kind of go right for the young adult or, you know, adult fantasy. I don't usually stick to things like um, adult fiction, uh, just general fiction. But this one kind of called out to me. And uh, tonight she will do the impossible. The amazing Arden saws a man in half every night. The crowd pays good money to watch. She's perhaps the most notorious illusionist in the country, but when one show goes terribly wrong, she finds herself in a one-room police station with a desperate officer determined to discover the truth. Even handcuffed and alone, Arden is far from powerless, and what she reveals is as unbelievable as it is spellbinding. Over the course of one eerie, endless night, the magician will need to pull off one final act, this time with her own life at stake. So that was enough to pull me in, even without the technical magic, I really think it's gonna be something I'm going to enjoy. And yeah, obviously I wouldn't have purchased it otherwise. Then I'm excited to show you my Pocket Pop Evil Queen collection that I purchased when I stopped at Half Price Books because I am a sucker and I have to buy these things. But anyway, we have Ursula, Maleficent, and the Evil Queen from Snow White. And they're really cute and they're little pop figures and I love them. And who doesn't love an Evil Queen? I don't know, but it's not me, because I love them. So here we are. This next book here I picked up solely based off of uh, cover love. Uh, it's called Sea of Shadows by Kelly Armstrong. I love this cover. It's just, the, I mean, it just looks like a swirl, but there's like a bird within the red, and it's just so pretty. And I remember, again, reading it in the bookstore, so I did, in fact, read the blurb. I can't remember what it's about, <laughs> but yeah, I do remember thinking I would at least enjoy it. So, in the Forest of the Dead, where the Empire's worst criminals are exiled, twin sisters Moria and Ashen are charged with a dangerous task, for they are the Keeper and the Seeker, and each year they must quiet the enraged souls of the damned. So that was enough to grab me in, and that's hopefully enough to grab you in, too. Sounds like a really cool read. Even just that little bit is enough. Next up we have Rebel of the Sands by Alwyn Hamilton, and this one is a relatively new release. I think it came out within the last week or two, actually. Um, I don't remember exactly what it's about here. Let's see. Uh, Mortals rule the desert nation of Miragi, uh, but mythical bees still roam the wild and remote areas, and rumor has it that somewhere Jinn still perform their magic. For humans, it's an unforgiving place, especially if you're poor, orphaned, or female. So that was, again, enough to pull me in to want to read this one here. Uh, I love 
love, love, love pretty much anything fantasy. And uh, I had read recently over the summer, last summer, I think it was summer, I don't know, but it was something called the um, the Ginny and the Gollum, Gollum and the Ginny, I can't remember. But I, I kind of liked whenever they would go into the past of the Ginny and um, that kind of magic. So I'm hoping we get to delve further into that kind of you know, magic. <laughs> I've said magic like six times. Next up we have The Shadow Queen by CJ, I'm gonna say Red Wine. That's how it's spelled, R-E-D-W-I-N-E, -E, but I think it's pronounced Redwin. And I like Redwin better. Um, I don't care if your name's pronounced the other way, I'm saying Redwin. Redwin, I just messed it up. Anyway, this one here is another one that I, um, is a new release and I just couldn't pass away. You know, this good, you know, people up at Half Price Books like to display their new books proudly in front and smash it right in the face. It's annoying. Anyway, um, this one is uh, Lord I De Lorelai Dietrich, crown princess and fugitive at large, has one mission. Kill the wicked queen who took both of Ravenspire throne and the life of her father. To do that, Lorelai needs to use the one weapon she and Queen Irana, Irina have in common. Magic. She'll have to be stronger, faster, and more powerful than Irina. Irina. The most dangerous sorceress Ravenspire has ever seen. So there you go. Has it gripped you yet? Do you want to buy this book? Because I did, and I'm going to read it, hopefully sometime within the next, you know, seven or eight years. <laughs> yeah. Next up we have yet another cover buy. I am terrible when it comes to buying books by, based on the cover, but, you know, that's the whole point of people who design covers, is to pull you in based off of what they look like. So this one's called The Emperor's Knife. This is book one. Uh, of the Tower and Knife Trilogy. It's by Mazarkis Williams. That's a fun first name. How did I never notice that? Mazarkis. Anyway, so there's that one there. Let's read a little blurb here. There's a cancer at the heart of the mighty Sarani Empire, a plague that attacks young and old, rich and poor alike. Geometric patterns spread across the skin until you die in agony and become a carrier, doing the bidding of an evil intelligence, the Pattern Master. Anyone showing the telltale marks is put to death. That is Emperor Bayon's law. But now the pattern is spreading over the Emperor's own arms. Hooked? Cool. Because I am, my gosh, I've forgotten how awesome some of these books are. I really need to remember them better. Yeah. Next up is The Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black. And this is a book that I'd seen mentioned a lot in the past, other um, booktube videos that has got a lot of positive reviews, and I'm looking forward to reading this one as well. Yeah! Another pickup from the Half Price Bookstore uh, to add to my Diana Wynne Jones collection is Hexwood. I have no idea what this one is about. I don't even think I read the blurb. I don't even like the cover because, you know, older fantasy books have pretty cheesy covers. Um, but the content, I'm sure, is wonderful. I love Diana Wynne Jones, and she is the author who wrote um, the Krista Mancy Chronicles that I really loved, and Time of the Ghost, and I can't think of any other books that I read of hers at the moment, but I really love this author, and I'm just, you know, slowly building pick to my collection of hers. Then, I finally picked up The Sleeper and the Spindle by Neil Gaiman. This is, uh, a graphic novel? Couldn't remember the word? Um, geez, I'm getting lots of graphic novels. I, maybe I'm getting more into them. I am loving it. Anyway, so it's, I can't really show it because it doesn't open well and I'm a freak about bending my books too much. Uh, but yeah, the cover is beautiful and it's fun to look at and it's got this weird like crazy dust jacket where you can kind of like see through it. Ah! You know, so you can see through it. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so I believe this is a, a take on Sleeping Beauty. Um, is based off of the cover and what um, what the title, I'm sorry, and what it says on the back here about pricking the finger when she turns 18. So I think this is a retelling of it, but it's in graphic novel form and it's beautiful and I love Neil Gaiman. So yeah. This next one here is called Assassin's Heart by Sarah Ayers, I think is how you say her last name. And this is a book I saw on another booktuber's channel and I can't remember if she read it or not, but the, I mean it just, you know, made me more aware of this book. So when I finally saw it in um, a bookstore, I picked it up. And I honestly don't really know what it's about, but because I'm writing my own book on assassins, I'm trying to read what I can on assassins to make sure I'm not overlapping anybody's story, because I'd really rather not try to get a book published that has already basically been published, because that would suck. And, you know, and I also like assassin stories, because they're cool. I mean, why would I write a story on assassins if I didn't like them? So, you know, there you are. Then we have another one I'm really excited about, which is Black Widow Forever Red, and this is by Margaret Stoll. Um, I'm kind of nervous because I didn't really like the 
Beautiful Creatures novels, um, and she was one of the co-authors of that book. But I really love, you know, anything with the Avengers and things like that. Like, it's, I'm, I, I just, I'm obsessed with that. I mean, of course, I don't read the comics, which is terrible. I should probably read the comics. I can't really call myself a fan having not read the comics. But I enjoy the movies, and I'm really excited to read it in novel form. And, yeah, she's pretty kick-ass. I mean, she doesn't have superpowers, but she kicks ass. <laughs> Excuse me, am I allowed to say that? I said it twice. Oops. Anyway, there we are. So, excited. Then we have Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare. This is the first book in the Dark Artifices series, and this is um, in, basically in the world of, you know, the Moral Instruments series and all of those kind of, and the um, Clockwork Princess one, what I could, the internal, Infernal Devices, that kind of world, but I think it follows a different main character as did the Infernal Devices uh, from Mortal Instruments. And I love this world. I'm starting to get kind of like, okay, when is she going to end this? But I can't stop myself from reading them, so we'll see. I did not like the show. I, I only gave it like one episode, so I'm not really, I can't really put too much of my own judgment in there. I'm hoping eventually it'll get better. Maybe I'll watch them all back to back when the first season comes out and, you know, not be so annoyed with it. But it was just the dialogue was way too cheesy for me to like, for me to take seriously. So, <laughs> Then we have A Gathering of Shadows by V.E. Schwab, and this is book two in the Darker Shade of Magic trilogy. Is that, I don't know what the actual trilogy is called, but it's the second, first book is Darker Shade of Magic, and then we have A Gathering of Shadows, and this is um, in the first one we, um, the guy we meet, he can go into different worlds. There's um, Red London and Black London and White London, and I thought there was a fourth one, but now I can't remember. Grey London, maybe? I don't know. But anyway, so, yeah, this is just continuing on with his story that I don't remember his name. Um, uh, Kel. Here we are. Kel, right? Kel's the guy. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so there, <laughs> there it is. And last, but certainly not least, is The Glass Sword by Victoria Aveyard. And this is book two in the Red Queen trilogy series. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, this is book two following the Red Queen. And I wasn't exactly, you know in love with the first one, but it was more so the main character I didn't care for versus the actual story. The story was really fun. And I think at the time I was going through a bit of a slump with female protagonists because I feel like we're just seeing the same person over and over and over again. But that being said, I still enjoy the story and I am excited for the story, whether I like the first main character or not, whose name I can't remember. And we'll be right here on the cop. Mare! Mare. There we go. That's her name. And there we are. So there you have it. The 30 books that I've purchased, picked up, purchased, whatever, since October. You know, if I missed any, I'm sorry. Yeah, I won't tell you because uh, I have no idea. And you will just keep that our secret that I have forgotten all the books that I've purchased. But at least those 30. And I'm excited about them. And let me know down below if you think I should pick any of them up sooner rather than later. Or if you've read any of them and you just love them and you just want to gush about them. I love to hear book gushing. It's my favorite thing to hear and do. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you later, book nerds.